Hi everybody and happy Friday. Today for Field Bio we're going to be doing some tree leaf identification and while you're watching this PowerPoint you should be taking notes on the Word document that is called Leaf ID Notes and remember you can take those by typing them into the document itself or you can hand write them I do recommend that you pause the video if you need to in order to copy down the notes. Um, if I'm going too fast or you're like, oh, I didn't get that, just go ahead and hit pause, and that way you can write it down. Um, the second thing, it's completely optional. I suggest that you continue working on your field guide and try to get three to five organisms identified and added to your field guide today um, because taking these leaf ID notes should not take you the entire um, 30 minutes of class time today, so you should have a little bit of extra time and I would get outside and get some of those organisms I need for your field guide. So the first um, tree we're going to look at is the northern red oak and there are several oaks we're going to look at today, but the northern red oak is in the red oak family, so oaks are either going to be red oaks or white oaks, and red oaks have um, pointed tips on their leaves, so these pointed bristles indicate that they're going to be a red oak, and the northern red oak specifically has evenly spaced pointed lobes, but it can have a varying number of lobes, and the backs are shiny. Um, so the back of this leaf is going to be shiny. That's going to be important because there's a few other oaks that look similar to the northern red oak. It's just They just don't have a shiny back or they have um, a different leaf margin. So this is the northern red oak. Next is the southern red oak. So you can see the southern red oak is another type of red oak. It has those pointed bristles at the end. But to tell it's a southern red oak, the base of it looks like a bell. So you could think of like the southern bells. So a southern bell is the southern red oak. It also has a long skinny middle lobe, so it's nice and long and skinny. And then the back of the leaf, um, you can see this is the back of the leaf, it's very light color as opposed to the top, which is very bright green, but it's also hairy. So if you felt it, you would feel hairs on the back of the southern red oak. Scarlet oak is our next one, and the scarlet oak is another type of red oak because it has those brussel-y pointed tips. However, the scarlet oak, the lobes, and you can see it really good right here, they cut in deeply towards that middle central vein, so they cut in way deeper than your northern red oak does. They also have a shiny back like your northern red oak, so um, the back does not have hair. The scarlet oak has that deep cut, though. Our next red oak family is the black oak, and you can see that the black oak has these little tiny bristles. Now sometimes they can be more pointed than other times, depending on the specific tree or leaf that you're looking at. So sometimes it might look more like a northern red oak, sometimes it'll look less like a northern red oak. However, what will give away the black oak is if you flip it over, there's going to be hair on the back. And that hair, if you take your hand and brush it over it, is going to wipe off. So it'll wipe off and become shiny if you rub the back of the black oak. Whereas the northern red oak is already shiny. There's no hairs on the back. Our next type of red oak is our willow oak. And the willow oak is in the red oak family. And you can barely see it like if you zoom into your screen. But if you were looking at a willow oak, the tip of it is pointed. It has a little bristle hair. So that's what tells me it's in the red oak family. But it's called willow oak. And the willow oak has no lobes. You can see it's just one long leaf. And it's called a willow oak because it looks similar to a willow tree. Next is our white oak. The white oak has rounded lobes, so now we're in our white oaks family as opposed to our red oaks family. And the white oak here um, is going to have evenly spaced lobes and a lot of variation. So there could be a bunch of lobes, there could be very few lobes, they could cut in deep in some spots, not cut in as deep in other spots. Um, this is our white oak. Another type of white oak in our white oak family is our swamp chestnut oak. Oak and our swamp chestnut oak is large and has many rounded lobes. So you can see each of these teeny tiny edges are lobes and so there's a lot of them. There's a lobe for every vein so it's a squiggly line. Sometimes the swamp chestnut oak is referred to as the basket 
chestnut oak. So they have kind of a similar name or a synonymous name. But we call it by swamp chestnut oak because that's what the Virginia Department of Forestry refers to it as. Another white oak family is post oak. And post, post oak has those rounded lobes. That's what tells me it's a white oak. But the top three lobes are squared off. So you can see that this one is kind of squared, this one's kind of squared, and this one's kind of squared. And it makes it look kind of like a, a cross. So here you see it like looks like a cross. So that's our post oak. Next we're looking at yellow poplar, and yellow poplar is sometimes referred to as tulip poplar because it has a, a flower on it in the springtime that looks kind of like a tulip, um, but it's also, but in Virginia, the Virginia Department of Forestry refers to it as yellow poplar. It has four lobes, so you can see one, two, three, four, and it kind of looks like a cat's face. So if these were the ears up here, then this is like their whiskers. That's our yellow poplar. Next is sweet gum. Sweet gum looks like a star and it has five finely toothed lobes. So if you look closely, you can see how they're super, 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 you know, they're super fine toothed. Next we have red maple. Red maple, um, sometimes people get, you know, too focused on the leaf and they need to take a step back to identify red maple because red maple has opposite leaves, meaning that if you have a leaf here, you're going to have a leaf right across from it coming off. So it's opposite part of that mad maple ash and dogwood. Um, and it are doubly toothed lobes, so each tooth is going to have like a little secondary tooth on it. The other thing that gives away red maple is that the stems of red maple are usually red in color and so are the younger parts of the red maple tree. So red maples in the fall turn bright, vibrant, bright colors um, in the change of the seasons. Now sycamore has a leaf that looks kind of similar to red maple. So if you look, the, they're kind of similar shape. But the sycamore leaf is a lot bigger. So in the spring, they're little, but they can get up to be up to like that big. So they can get really big. Um, and they're coarsely toothed. They're, they don't have that double tooth. And the thing that gives away sycamore is its camo bark. So if you saw a sycamore tree, it would have that camouflage bark. There's a sycamore right outside of the school by the bus loop over by the garden. So you could see those over there, or you, maybe you can recall seeing them over there. Next is ash. Now ash is part of our MAD group. So just like our maples, it has opposite leaf branching, but this time it's compound. So instead of having one entire leaf, the leaf is going to be this whole thing here with the little leaflets coming off of it. So this whole structure is the leaf of ash. And you can see it's opposite of this other leaf that's coming across on the opposite side. Our other compound leaf is hickory. However, our hickory is not opposite because it's not in mad. So it's going to have alternate branching. So that's what's going to give uh, give it away that it's not the ash or that it is the ash. If the branches are alternate, so one leaf is coming off here and then the next leaf comes off down here, you're going to be looking at hickory. And if they're opposite of each other, it's going to be your ash if there's a compound leaf. So the compound leaf of hickory looks kind of like this. And hickory has nuts. So a lot of times when you see a hickory tree, there'll be nuts on the ground below it. Next we'll look at persimmon. So persimmon has arcuate veins. So remember that means that the vein follows the margin of the leaf. So it comes up and then kind of curves along the margin of the leaf. Um, the margins are entire, so there's no tooths on the edge of it. And on the back you can see these oily veins. So they're kind of, this looks really good right here, so it's really oily looking. Persimmon also create, uh, generates fruit in the end of the summer, and it's usually bright orange. In Colonial Williamsburg, a lot of time they'll take that persimmon fruit and they'll create um, wreaths and decorate the houses with it. Next is American Beach. American Beach has a coarsely toothed leaf margin. It's a pretty simple looking leaf with hairs on the back. Um, they also have a very unique three-sided seed. 
that American Beach has, but the main quality that you'll recognize if you're out and about is going to be the gray bark on American Beach. It's solid gray, which makes people carve into it a lot of times, and it grows really slowly. American Holly has a similar bark. However, it's an evergreen, so it's always going to be green, and it's highly recognizable for its coarsely toothed leaf margin, so it's, it can be pretty prickly, like if you touch it, it might hurt. Um, they have red berries if they're a female, and no red berries if it's a male, so they are different between the two tree types. Um, American Holly is a pretty straightforward one to recognize with those thick evergreen leaves. Next is a cedar. So cedar is another type of evergreen, and this is eastern red cedar. Eastern red cedar has scaly needle-like leaves, so they're like needles. And then there's little berries that are blue or gray, and they're very waxy. So if you took them off and played with them or squished them in your hand, it would feel like you were playing with candle wax that just had a little bit of grit in it from a plant material. Next is another evergreen, loblolly pine, and loblolly pine is pretty common. You've probably seen it all over the place. Um, they have long needles, so the needles are very long, and they're in bundles of three. So each needle group has three needles coming off of it, and those needles are pretty long, usually like that wide. Um, the cones are also pretty long compared with our Virginia pine. So um, that's going to be our loblolly pine. The cones are usually about that long on that. Next is Virginia pine. Virginia pine has smaller cones, pretty short and almost round in structure, and a lot shorter needles. So the needles are usually only about that long for Virginia pine. Um, and the thing that's going to give it away that it's Virginia pine is if you look at those needles, they're going to be in groups or bundles of two instead of three. So groups of two is going to be our Virginia pine. So once again, um, hopefully you got all your notes taken during this PowerPoint and you were able to get them on that leaf ID document. And then you can go ahead and turn them in to either me or Miss Elton, whichever teacher you have. Um, also, though, if you have some extra time today, I suggest that you go outside and identify a few more organisms for your field guide. Um, my goal, if I was doing it, I would try to get three to five organisms today. But remember, that's not a requirement. It's just an option. It's something that I think that you should do in order to take advantage of your little bit extra time you have today.